let's talk about the appointment. The actual scripting I'm going to do um, on Tuesday in the Tuesday class, but let's jump into what kind of the ideal listing appointment looks like. You, when you arrive, you're going to ask to have a table where you can set down your items. Um, you really want like a dining room table where everybody can sit and look at each other in the eye. Um, you need to take control of the situation from the get-go and show that you know what you're doing and there's a proven system for making this happen. Um, and so we're doing that by asking, where can we all sit down in a few minutes and meet? Um, and let me put my stuff down. But what I do is I'll bring a folder with all the paperwork and everything and I'll put it down at that seat. But then I have a clipboard that I'm going to carry around with me and I'm going to ask for permission. I'm going to ask them to go ahead and give me a tour of the home. While we're touring the home, please be sure you point out anything you love about the home or what made you buy the home to begin with. But also point out anything that's been damaged or needs repairs or maybe repairs you've done in the past, those sort of things. Um, and get permission to take notes while they tour you around. Again, we're trying to set ourselves apart and be different. Most agents aren't going to bother taking notes. You need these notes. You need these notes for a lot of reasons, mainly so that when it's time to put the home in MLS, you remember everything. Taking notes on, is there sprinklers? Is there automatic sprinklers? Are they in both yards? What's gas? What's not gas? Water heater, AC. How old is the AC? Is there septic? What kind of septic? You know, all those details we need to know. We also, while we're walking around, you're going to want to ask them, is there anything attached to the home, a light fixture, cabinets in the garage, that sort of thing that they want to take with them? If there are, then you need to suggest they go ahead and take them down before you go on the market. That's the ideal situation. If they can't, then make a note of it. Once you've toured the home, you're going to sit down together at the table and review all the questions on that lead sheet from the phone call, their timeline, why do they need to move? What's their goal of the move? How much do they owe? All those things. We're going to recap and we're going to bond and build rapport while doing that. Then we're going to go over the CMA and you're going to say, you know, based on everything I just saw in this home, I, I came in here kind of with a, a value in mind that was in a range. And I think everything I've seen tells me you really are at the high end of this range. This is a beautiful home. No matter what's wrong with the home, you love the home. They have to understand and believe you really love this home and you're anxious to sell it for them. Um, but let's say you looked at it and it needs everything. It's a total gut and redo. Then we're at the bottom, you know, the, the lower end of the price point on that range, maybe even lower than what we thought originally, depending on how bad it is. So just be prepared to explain, like, while the home does need work, it means we're not going to be able to ask top dollar, but I'm really excited to sell this because this is a phenomenal opportunity for a buyer. And then talk about the pricing. And if they agree with you on the price, then you're going to move on to the commissions. And the way we move on to the commissions is by pulling out that net sheet we prepared ahead of time and going through that and explaining it to them. On the net sheet, you should have one line for your commission at 3% and then another line for the buyer's agent at 3%, but explain to them they get to pick that buyer's agent commission on what they want to charge, but that you charge 3%. If they push back, then that's the time you address it and you decide how you want to handle that on your end for your commission. Um, again, I believe a sign in the yard is better than a sign in the car. So I would, if they're insisting on cutting the commission down to 2% for you or 1% or whatever, you know, negotiate as much as you can, but then ultimately give in because uh, a listing can bring other business. But then when I, you know, when someone asks me to reduce my, com com ugh, my commission, I'm going to say, no problem. However, I'm going to hit you up for referrals. You're going to make it up to me. Okay. Okay. And then you're going to hit them up for referrals every chance you get. Um, address any other questions and then ask them if they're ready to get started. Have that listing agreement, IABS, ready for them to sign. Then have pull out the seller's disclosure and the T47, ask them for their survey, go through the homework. I always say that I can't go on the MLS without having these items back, the T47, the survey, and the disclosure back. Sometimes they'd rather have the seller's disclosure sent to them electronically to fill out. That's totally fine. Um, if, they, if you say, are you ready to sign, and they've given you green lights through all of this, and they're not ready to sign, they want to think about it, then chances are you, you've either missed the mark on pricing and they haven't told you, or you're charging too much on commission and they've got another agent who's told them they charge less. So I would then address those issues 
and then try again and ask them to, to sign. Um, when you do, and I should have mentioned this in the previous video, when you're scheduling the appointment, always ask them, are you going to be interviewing agents? If they're interviewing agents, you really want to be last, last to interview. And I'll even tell them that. I'll be like, I want to go last. When's your last appointment? Let me schedule it after that. And then they'll laugh about it. Um, when you do sit down, one step I don't really have here, I guess, is when you do sit down after you've toured the home, ask them if they had any questions from the packet you left for them. Again, in that packet, it addressed the marketing side of things and the brokerage and your, your track record and all of those. So hopefully they don't have any questions from that. Then you can go into all of this. Okay, I hope this helps. Um, another thing I use to get them to sign is that I'll say, I'm anxious to get my stager here um, and then to schedule the photographer, but I can't do either of those until we sign the listing agreement. Are you ready to get started? Should I call the stager today? And then they'll say, oh yeah, great, let's do it. Um, these are some final tips on listing appointments. You know, dress to impress. You only get a chance to make a first impression once. Uh, build rapport. You need to do less talking. They need to do more talking in this listing appointment. If they're not sharing and opening up with you, you're probably going to have trouble getting them to commit on that appointment. Um, trial closes. Okay. What day is best for us to go on the market? Um, and then go into the close. You're ready to sign. Let's get going. I'd like to schedule my stager. Again, if you're getting objections, usually these are the objections and they just may not feel comfortable. Or these are the objections, but they but these are really the reasons behind the objections and they're just not telling you that. So ask them point blank. You have nothing to lose while you're there by asking them and being bold. Um, some more tips on this. Show them, not tell them. Have tools if you need them. Um, provide options to sellers. This is good. We've added this in the last year or so. An instant cash offer. Maybe they really don't want to go on the market. Tell them you can get an investor to make an instant cash offer. We can go ahead and submit and do that for them. And then we would charge them to help negotiate and protect them along the way. Rehabbing the house to sell for top dollar. There are companies out there that will do work on the home and then they can split the profit in the end if they don't have the money to do it. If they're trying to buy and sell, maybe homeward's a great way for them to go. Um, and then the traditional resale market, which is what we've just been talking about. Visual aids, but keep it simple. Like they can handle charts and staffs, stats and graphs, but they're not going to read a bunch of stuff. Don't make it too wordy. I think that is it. Oh, this just goes into time blocking to get your um, pre-list packet ready. The Word version is no longer in Sweet Assist. It is on our por portal. We just moved to the portal. And then it says ask Autumn for the template. That is ask Carlin for the template. This has changed a little bit. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about stages of the listing in the next video. Talk to you soon.